to you, Ravi. Yeah, thank Welcome. you. Uh, uh, I'm audible, right? Uh, how many of you have used uh, Arduino or Raspberry Pi? Yeah. So, talk uh, covers about uh, uh, Raspberry Pi and Arduino. So I, I'm, I've come all the way from India, so this is my first talk. I uh, work with a company called Azoi. Uh, Azoi uh, so at Azoi, we uh, basically focus on health and uh, mobile uh, computing. Uh, we have offices in uh, US and India. Uh, I, I take care of software development responsibilities at Azoi. Uh, so I started my career with uh, uh, web and uh, uh, mobile technologies and uh, from like last two years I've been working in the space of Internet of Things. Uh, so uh, at Azoi we have built this uh, product called Keto. It's a sm uh, smartphone which uh, monitors your health. So I'll just give a quick overview of Keto. So, it has a uh, it work on bluetooth low energy it has its own battery uh, battery lasts for like 2 months uh, there are some sensors on the uh, back of the cover where you place your fingers and like hold it for a few seconds and it will measure your ecg heart rate respiration blood oxygen level and uh, blood pressure i'll demo it's a video i couldn't get the device right now So basically, you uh, those, those are the electrodes for ECG. Uh, the below sensors are for your temperature and uh, SpO2 readings. If you are interested. Uh, it gets all the results with um, like medical grade accuracy. So yeah. So in, in this talk, I'll, I'll be focusing more on the challenges that we face when we, uh, you know, we, when we are in the prototype, and those, and w w what are the alternatives that we can use to overcome those challenges, and I'll talk about some frameworks uh, which uh, we use and which are like really uh, good frameworks for uh, where we want to, you know, have devices communicate with each other. So uh, before I start, I, I want to share uh, some of my experiences with uh, building few product prototypes. So the first experience is from when I was uh, in my university and we uh, had to build a gateway in uh, Python. So at university, we decided the uh, requirements. So we were our own. Uh, clients and build uh, an API which uh, allows developers to send and receive SMS because SMS gateways back in 2008 uh, were very expensive. So we thought of building uh, REST APIs which where developers can send and receive SMS using a cell phone connected with server. So in order to do that we needed a phone and uh, some uh, communication channel between the phone and the server. And this was a part of our uh, 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 distributed computing curriculum, so we uh, decided to use oriented architecture. Uh, we also d built uh, an, uh, a front end where you can see the messages that were in queue and, uh, and the status of uh, incoming messages. So basic part uh, was that we used a Symbian phone. Uh, how many of you are Symbian fans over here? <laughs> so yeah, back, back in 2008, Symbian was, I guess, the uh, best operating system in uh, like uh, smartphone world before like iPhone came. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, decided to use Symbian. And as Symbian has uh, this Python support, so uh, we used a library called Lightblue. Lightblue uh, is a wrapper which is cross-platform across Linux, Mac, uh, and Symbian. 
So we used same interface both on uh, Linux and as well as on Symbian end to communicate it, to communicate uh, to ma make communication channel between uh, both the devices. So initially we thought of doing it using AT commands and stuff like that, but then we realized that use uh, uh, light blue, it it would be much easier using Python. Yeah, and for the UI, so basically uh, the architecture, yeah, we use this phone. Uh, it it wasn't that powerful, like no dual core, quad core, but pretty enough uh, to SQL, PHP, and uh, basic Python. So we the basic architecture was, yeah. So we had uh, an application, a service running on Symbian phone which would connect to the server and where we would store the incoming messages and the request for sending uh, outgoing messages. And so we, uh, using web services, basically developers would send a request and that request would be then transferred to the phone and from there to the network, our cellular network. Uh, so using this, we also built uh, some of the uh, applications which would utilize this uh, APIs, basic uh, chat clients like GTalk. Uh, back in 2008, we had uh, we we could chat uh, on GTalk using SMS uh, via the services. So that was part of the demo. So yeah, that was so this experience uh, like figured out that. Uh, using Python, so this was the first time when I was uh, like using Python uh, on a project and I figured that using it was like, it was quick to build. So second experience is building a wireless a presenter using Ar Arduino. So this was part of a 24 hour hackathon. So uh, we basically collected a few uh, devices and boards. So in order to build a wireless presenter in 24 hours, we first had to finalize the components. So uh, we needed a microcontroller, a board where, uh, which would run the uh, application, a switch to uh, navigate through the slides, some sort of power, power source because it was a, an handheld device, uh, connectivity with the computer so that it could send, uh, send the control messages and a control service running on, on the computer. So we, we used uh, Arduino because it's pretty easy to uh, start with. And we use a tactile switch, uh, connected it with Arduino. Uh, we connected battery source. Uh, we chose to use uh, for communication because uh, of this module, uh, which I'll talk about later. And we had a simple service uh, running on the machine, on the computer. Yeah, so th there is a, uh, an interesting board uh, called Cactus Micro. It's basically uh, Arduino plus ESP Wi-Fi module and gives you a very neat and tiny package of Arduino and Wi-Fi chip. So we decided to use that. and. So the size of uh, Cactus Micro is this tiny. So these were the actions we wanted to perform. Uh, so all the basic actions like navigating through the slides, making connection with the computer, like pa pairing for the first time, and a service which would accept those uh, signals and fire events on the host machine. So. We did it using Arduino uh, IDE, but it was a little time consuming. So we thought, how can we uh, optimize it further or maybe uh, uh, techniques to do it quickly. So yeah, so th these were the actions that we uh, decided, like next slide, one click, previous slide, double click uh, on the button, and for connection, we set it up as a Wi-Fi access point and connected, uh, so communication happens over HTTP. So it's a basic get request from Arduino would switch it to the next slide and uh, another request would switch it to previous slide. 
So for firing events, uh, we use a modal based app, app server plus py, uh, there is an interesting library called py user inter, uh, which helps you inject event in OS, uh, no matter which OS you use, it's basically it supports all three of the major OSs, uh, Windows, Linux and Mac. Yeah, so then we realized that uh, this module itself is more powerful than Arduino. So the way it works is this, uh, that uh, and Arduino talks via serial. Uh, it happens to be that this module supports MicroPython. So this was the time to try MicroPython because we don't have as many options when it comes to the Python world as we have uh, in other uh, languages. So yeah, uh, using MicroPython, the connection and setup was as simple as this. So all the like hundreds of lines of uh, Arduino code and we replaced it with this. So it's pretty simple. You just connect to uh, any SSID with uh, uh, WPA key, get a socket, you uh, register your callable, uh, connect to the server and so it, it was pretty neat and uh, we used the uh, button events from Arduino. This is the code from the uh, host end, which is equally simple because we basically get an instance of py keyboard and then we just key event to switch the slide on the get request. So yeah, so this is when again we realized that using Python can uh, like speed up our prototyping process and because it, it makes it easy to uh, make demoable applications. Yeah, so we extensively use uh, Arduino, uh, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone. So we basically build uh, on platform and use uh, standard Python interpreter, build applications, and quickly test and come up with prototype uh, products. So if we look at the microcontroller options for Python, there aren't that many boards available in market. Uh, but uh, there are few of them, and more more coming. Uh, more are uh, coming. Uh, one is PY board. PY board is uh, uh, again a micro Python project. Uh, another one is a Kickstarter. Uh, is, is on Kickstarter. It's YPy. So it's quite powerful. PY board itself has uh, like accelerometer, 168 megahertz CPU, GPIOs, and some LEDs and a switch. So building simple applications using uh, this board is very straightforward. It gives us the Pythonic interface to interact with all the hardware which, which we connect with this device. It also has a micro SD slot. It lets you access a file system. So if you want to build something uh, which lets it capture uh, some logs and store it, stores it locally and syncs periodically to, in order to save battery or something, then we can do it. But the problem is this one doesn't have a uh, Wi-Fi in it. We can definitely using uh, the serial interface. And another option is uh, Wi-Fi. This one is interesting. It comes with uh, Wi-Fi and uh, uh, micro SD slot. The problem is it's pre-order. Uh, they'll start shaping it in September, I think. Yeah. So this one is the Kickstarter uh, project. So if we have more of such boards, I think it would uh, make it easy for hobbyist uh, makers to quickly of their ideas. So on the frameworks, and we uh, have protobufs, uh, like any Internet of Things system would need some sort of mechanism to interact with each other. So there are a few of the, them are like MQTT and Protobuf. So, uh, most, mostly it's used together, like Protobufs are used for serialization and trans, trans, transferred via MQTT. There is this interesting library called WebIOPy. This library lets you uh, uh, install, uh, install this library on your Raspberry Pi. It, 
lets you access and see monitor all the all the uh, IO controllers so all the inputs so I, I think how many of you have used uh, protobuf protobufs yeah lot, quite a lot so th this is like uh, if you are building something where uh, multiple devices are communicating uh, I think this is something it's a must have uh, library because it takes a lot of work uh, from uh, from our end because uh, it's basically a language neutral library where wherein you just declare your data structure and uh, using product of compilers it will generate files for various programming languages let's say you are building an application using java and uh, your another application is using python uh, third one is uh, using c++ then the com exchange happens using binary and is compatible compatible with all the languages because the parsers are available for all the languages it also provides validations and so in case you uh, re receive a protobuf message and want to check if it's valid you can easily do it without writing any code uh, it also provides backward compatibility. So let's say if uh, two of your devices, uh, multiple devices are communicating and you want to uh, uh, upgrade the protocol, maintaining previous devices, you can handle it in the new protocol, new implementation. So MQTT is again, it's, it's like HTTP, uh, mostly binary. So uh, people use it, uh, with like protobuf and MQTT in order to make uh, a communication network between devices. It also supports the pub sub model. So, yeah, this is a very, very good uh, documentation, including protobuf. Protobuf also has documentation. This one is like very simple. If you want to uh, connect uh, some LEDs or motors and want to see if it's working or not, it wants to quickly test if your connections are proper or not, you can uh, install WebIOPI and then you can uh, access the web UI from another machine and see if, if things are connected properly or not. Basically, you can control GPIOs using web-based UI. It also provides REST interface, so for basic application, you may not even, uh, not even need to write any code on the uh, embedded end. So yeah, uh, I think that's it. Uh, so before closing, uh, I would like to uh, know if there are any questions for me. Thank you for that talk. It was uh, very insightful to get started with something. I was wondering, obviously, when um, I would start with um, experiment by connecting an Arduino controller and so on, how do you do uh, the debugging um, around these components? Because I'm sure that the first thing that they're going to be plugging together will not work. So, so on uh, Raspberry Pi, it's it's still very simple. But uh, on the other boards, it gets difficult because most of the uh, development boards has has some sort of proprietary interface and uh, libraries or framework tools which some of them are quite expensive so without that you cannot uh, debug <laughs> but yeah on on raspberry pi it's straightforward you can you because it provides you a complete distribution you can use all the tools that we use in normal development process Any more questions? We have a little bit more time. There's, a, I think, a coffee break after this session. Maybe a Symbian question. Oh, okay, just kidding. Down there, okay. So you showed us the uh, case on the phone that could monitor stuff. Uh, is it? you know, kind of production ready and what do you intend to do with this project? So yeah, it's production ready. Uh, we have started shipping in uh, UK. Uh, I can show you the demo uh, uh, offline. So uh, I mean, what's the typical use cases out there? What users can, so are they expected to like, hold the phone, 
get the uh, the health report while well, talking and holding the phone by hand. So what do you uh, so, plan with it? Yeah. Thanks. So uh, so the purpose is to um, uh, you know maintain a healthy lifestyle. So in order to a healthy lifestyle, you will have to uh, keep monitoring your vitals and see if everything is okay. So the application is is designed in such a way that it it collects your data. Like if you take reading uh, twice a day, uh, so it will basically uh, using it over a period of time, you'll start seeing some trends. Start uh, some activities in your. So if, there, if there is any change in your lifestyle, you'll see how it's impacting your health. So that's one of the use cases. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the, the, maybe a question from my side. And this this application is also done with the Raspberry or embedded Python or. How do you do you reading out the information? So there yeah, th that application is available for both Android and iOS. It basically works with uh, all the smartphones. The case is such that you stick it on your back of your phone, and it has nothing to do with phone as such. Uh, it basically is uh, an independent component which talks to your phone and data which you we just uh, visualize there. Sorry? Where is Python in this case? Yeah, in, uh, the Python is used extensively in uh, building the product, uh, not on the embedded side, because it's uh, it, it's used in uh, to test our algorithm. We have a backend service where you can sync uh, all the data. So uh, use uh, this cloud platform is powered by Django. So we we use all the uh, all the web stack is on Python. And we, for as I said, for prototype Python extensively because we. Uh, so in order to uh, connect the sensors and uh, easily try and see if it works or not. So the iteration that we uh, in Python is much much quicker than doing it uh, the traditional way. Okay, there's another question. Uh, hi, um, thanks for the talk. Uh, I'd like to ask you, how do you guys handle uh, firmware upgrades? Sorry? Firmware upgrades. How firmware do you guys, upgrades, yeah. Like, like if, you, if you're uh, working with the Pi board or the Wi-Pi or other boards, um, can you do Wi-Fi firmware upgrades or you are forced to do, I don't know, over the, over the wire? It's, it's generally done over the air. So basically we maintain two separate images. So once you flash these images, you switch to the uh, the ba backup image, and you erase the other area. You upgrade it, and then you again switch back to the newer image. So that's how we do it. Okay. In um, in case you want to um, deploy or kind of up upgrade your own code running on the board, um, how do you guys? So uh, it's done using so uh, on the cloud, and we'll. Uh, Basically, up a new image which is delivered to the application. Application uh, application is on the smart, downloads the image and then it transfers to the uh, the product the keto case. You don't ever change the keto case itself. I mean, if 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 you want to upgrade the the protocol, if you happen to find a bug in in the case and you want to upgrade the case that is receiving and and handling the data, but you know the case itself. The case itself. So you are talking about the embedded uh, side of it, right? right. Yeah. So uh, we we can uh, up update the image using uh, standard Bluetooth uh, framework. So we have built a BLE service via which we can uh, we transfer some over to the case where it stores it in a, a allocated pre-allocated area, and once it it receives all the data, it will verify whether the data received is basically a checksum uh, integrity check and then uh, once it ensures that the data received is correct then it will basically reboot to the newer image that's how we uh, deliver uh, upgrades okay so that's sort of custom made right no that's something that you've get yeah yeah that's the way because there there is no other way for doing this uh, thank you very much yeah thank you okay
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think WiPi looks very promising. Uh, my, you can always try micro Python on like standard uh, boards, but WiPi is like built for this specific purpose. So I think uh, once it's out in market, uh, I feel that it will definitely help a lot of people get started with building products. You know, if you want to be, build something like let, uh, then you can use one of these boards. You can connect and you. Because I, I feel Pythonic ways where, where you know it gets very very simple to communicate with hardware. So uh, like you can connect all sort of uh, hardware with WiPi and use uh, micro Python interface to uh, uh, operate them. Uh, sure. So uh, I just wanted to recommend you some sessions on Thursday. I think there are several 